All right, hello everyone, and welcome to yet another understanding someone's tactical analysis. We've done Klopp, we've done Conte, we've done Pochettino, and one that a lot of people have constantly, on all the other four videos, been asking for is Jose Mourinho's Manchester United, uh, which is going to be quite an interesting one. So uh, let's get started. So, who is Jose Mourinho? The 4-2-3-1, trying to replicate his 4-2-3-1 in Football Manager 2017. And last but not least, we're going to take a look at uh, whether or not we were successful. So, who is Jose Mourinho? This really shouldn't even be necessary. I think even people that don't watch football are more than aware of who Jose Mourinho is. His father was a professional footballer. He tried to become a professional footballer, couldn't make the cut. Uh, his mum apparently signed him up to business school. He dropped out after his first day and studied sports science instead, always with kind of a long-term goal of wanting to become a football coach or manager of some sort. He worked under Bobby Robson at both Sporting and FC Porto. He coached under Louis van Gaal at Barcelona, which is kind of ironic given that Mourinho eventually became the Real Madrid manager. And he was also assistant manager to uh, Jupp Hanks at Benfica. Jupp Hanks, of course, some of you will remember him from his time at Bayern and he managed Real Madrid a few times as well. And when he got the sack, I think it was something like a few games into a season under Benfica, instead of bringing in another manager, they actually ended up promoting Jose Mourinho, which was kind of where he started his management career. So he managed Benfica, some more Portuguese clubs, Porto winning the Champions League with them. He then went to Chelsea, managed at Inter Milan, then Real Madrid, and then back to Chelsea again, then Man United. But I'm not going to go into too much detail about who on earth is Jose Mourinho, because unlike some of the previous managers we've looked at, like Klopp and Conte and Pochettino, who, you know, their history might not exactly be that well known by people, I'd like to think that if you're a football fan, you know a lot about Jose Mourinho. If you don't, then I don't know, you must have been born yesterday or something. Tactically, he's one to adapt. He's always gone with a different approach based on the players at his disposal. So when he was Porto manager, he sometimes played with a bit of a 4-3-1-2 or a 4-1-2-1-2, some people call it. Sometimes he'd play with a 4-3-3 and use wingers. Uh, when he first came to the Premier League, most teams played 4-4-2 at the time. He came in and said, I'm going to play Drogba or Goody Onsen up front on their own and kind of like broke what everyone was used to and said, if I can play Makaleli in front of the back four with two centre mids in front of him, we always have at least one more person in the middle of the park, which means we can dominate possession and we always have a passing triangle. And, you know, ever since then, that 4-3-3, which is more of a traditional V-shaped 4-5-1, as we see on Football Manager, eventually became a 4-2-3-1 when he went to Real Madrid. Ozil playing behind your Benzema's, your Ronaldo on the left, your Di Maria on the right, and so on. When he came back to Chelsea, he went with a 4-2-3-1 approach where he famously sold Mata, which baffled a lot of people because Mata kind of seemed like a perfect player to play just off Drogba or Diego Costa, who finished top scorer for Chelsea that season. But yeah, at Man United, he's gone with the 4-2-3-1. And the lovely thing about the 4-2-3-1 is that even though we can sit here and say, well, Mourinho used to play with more of a 4-3-3, and that became a 4-2-3-1. Really, you can even argue that Mourinho kind of played with a 4-2-3-1 in his first season at Chelsea as well, where, of course, he came in straight away, European champion, in his own words, not one off the bottle, um, where he called himself the special one. And really, when you consider the forward runs Frank Lampard used to make, even though he was a centre midfielder, Given the forward runs Lampard used to make, you can also argue that when Makaleli used to push forward from in front of the back two and, Mac and Lampard would push forward, that it turns into a 4-2-3-1 as well. So really, the 4-2-3-1 is a very versatile formation and it can look very different based on how you want to play. And that's why, as a base formation, it's perfect for managers that like to target opposition weaknesses and like to change things around 
um, going into different games to try and exploit opposition weaknesses. So, the idea of the 4-2-3-1 and with most five midfield formations, pack the midfield. If you can dominate midfield, you can dominate games and dominate the ball. Park the plane. A lot of people talk about Mourinho having a bit of a reputation in terms of parking the bus and playing ugly, boring, defensive football. Personally, I beg to differ. I think his Chelsea and Real Madrid sides were some of the best counter-attacking sides I've ever seen in the history of football. And even though, yes, they were very defensive, but you kind of have to be defensive and solid at the back to be able to counter-attack efficiently. Mourinho was once interviewed, I think when he was Inter Milan manager, the journalist asked him, why do you park the bus? And he said, we didn't park the bus, we parked the plane, because they were defending a lead going into a second leg, and they parked the plane, and they put themselves a place in the next round of the Champions League. So, in terms of the systems, quite similar. You think of Real Madrid, you think of his second spell at Chelsea. Hazard, Ronaldo, both playing out on one wing, the left wing in particular, cutting inside. Um, not unusual as well on the other opposite side, instead of having an inside forward, you'd have a winger just to offer that difference going forward, different option going forward and a little bit of balance. You think about Mourinho historically, whether it was Drogba, Gudjonsson, Benzema, Diego Melito at Inter, you know, all or even now Ibra. Mourinho loves playing with a physical striker who's strong in the air, can cause opposition players problems and that works in favor of how he wants to play in terms of playing on the counter attack you need a big man up front for when you launch direct balls forward and quickly try to turn defense into attack when your wingers start bombing forward in the transitional phase but once again what's important to remember particularly whilst watching this video is that even though Mourinho plays with a 4-2-3-1 nowadays that can easily become a 4-5-1, a 4-4-1-1, or a 4-3-3. And these are all formations that are incredibly interchangeable and fluid. And you can argue are even the same formation, really. And when you're playing football manager, in terms of how the formation changes, in real life, it will change based on Mourinho trying to target a specific opposition weakness. So when playing football manager, really, it can change based off how you want it to change. It's your job. You're trying to be Mourinho. It'll be your job to try and target an opposition weakness. So how the formation changes ends up being up to you. So philosophically, like we said, Mourinho's always been the kind of manager who believes that if you don't concede, you can't lose games. And has always managed with a defend first approach and like we said earlier on it makes sense when you want to play fast direct counter-attacking football so even if you end up with less possession quality over quantity right it's all good being Pep Guardiola for example finishing a game with 70% possession but losing it 1-0 you can keep the ball a lot but if you don't put the ball in the back of the net which is at the end of the day the aim of the game then you're not going to get anywhere He's known really for playing with a slightly deeper defensive line. Pretty narrow. Helps really when it comes to keeping clean sheets. It's not unusual really to see Mourinho teams being highly disciplined, very organised, pretty rigid, having a lot of men behind the ball, having strikers attacking midfielders contribute to closing down. You need a high work rate in a Mourinho side. And that was one of the reasons why in his second spell at Chelsea, he sold Juan Mata and played William in the hole off Diego Costa or Drogba instead, or a Ramirez, for example, because Mourinho didn't think that Juan Mata, well, it wasn't a case of he didn't think, he knew for a fact that Juan Mata wasn't able to provide that same amount of defensive work rate that he wanted, essentially, from his entire block of midfielders. And that's why he sold Juan Mata and favoured someone like a William or a Ramirez. At Manchester United, Mourinho has allowed specific roles to play with a little bit more freedom than I think we're used to seeing under Mourinho as a manager if we look back at most of his previous tactical approaches in his different teams. And one of the main reasons for that is because he is an adaptive manager. 
he's coming to Man United and a lot of people have kind of said he's spent a lot of money, which he has. But if you think about it, he's spent a lot of money on specific players and in terms of the squad, he's inherited a lot of players from the squad that Louis van Gaal built. And Louis van Gaal is a very technical manager, likes his team to keep possession, which is quite a contrast to how Mourinho historically likes his teams to play, even though Mourinho obviously worked under Louis van Gaal at Barcelona. So coming into Man United, yes Mourinho's for example bought Pogba, but despite that he still realises that the mass majority of players at his disposal are less physically oriented and more technically gifted. And we compare his current Man United side to, for example, his past two Chelsea sides, whether it was one in, I think, 2003, the legendary one with Joe Cole and Robin on each wing, versus um, the one where he recently won the Premier League with, with you know players like Hazard and, and Diego Costa. His Chelsea sides had much better physical players players who were better in the air, players that were stronger, players that were more defensively suited. Whilst now at Man United, you think about Man United's side. I mean, for God's sake, they play Valencia at right back. You know what I mean? And Valencia isn't a right back. You think about their midfield. Really, other than perhaps Pogba, the mass majority of their centre midfielders are pretty lightweight. Carrick is a playmaker. Um, Lingard isn't really a defensive player. Fellaini, for me anymore, isn't really a defensive player. Yes, he's tall, and he looks like a tree in the middle of the park, but he's not really a Matic, or a Makaleli, or a Sami Kadira, or a Chabi Alonso, or even a Cambiasso. So, well, at Man United, Mourinho's intelligently acknowledged that I've spent a lot of money on Pogba, and the odd player here and there, but I've got to work with what I've got, which is why he's realised that he's got to change his approach around for at least this season at Man United until he can probably go out there and bring in some more players. So, instead of a Makaleli, Kadira, Matic playing as an out-and-out anchor man or defensive midfielder protecting the back four, you know, to give your team that low block more defensive solidness, really, to make sure that you don't concede any goals and can play on the counter-attack, he's now playing with more of a deep-lying playmaker who also has the freedom to push into midfield. You can argue that that is Herrera that will come a little bit deeper. It's not unusual to see that particular player swap with the advanced playmaker as well in Mata. You watch Man United, sometimes you'll see, even though you think of Mata as an out-and-out -out attacking midfielder, he'll sometimes come ridiculously deep to pick the ball up off the centre-backs, should they have the ball, and then play a direct ball forwards. So, whether it's Herrera or Mata dropping deep, Neither of them two players are really out-and-out out defensively minded players looking to break up attacks. Fullback wise you think about his time at Chelsea. Sometimes he'd play Dave or Spill at right back, sometimes he'd play Equator would play left back. Wouldn't be unusual to see a player like Ivanovic playing right back that can't offer that much going forward, but Mourinho didn't really mind because he offered a lot of defensive solidity. Or you think about his first Chelsea side where he had Ferreira at left back, who wasn't really that good going forward, but what he offered was protection so that the winger in front of him, who was a real attacking player in the form of Robin out on the left wing, or Joe Cole out on the left wing, could go and do his stuff. Now at Man United, he's realised that if he's going to score goals, he's not got these defensive fullbacks that he normally likes. So his fullbacks now have a greater license to close down in midfield, help out that way, but also bomb forward. Valencia's current ability out on the right-hand side to some of the previous right-backs, for example, or fullbacks that Mourinho's had, Valencia gets a lot more leeway going forward, particularly considering that he's naturally a winger, which is why he's playing the, the position or the role that he is. And let's bear in mind as well, we saw Ashley Young playing left-back at times. That, on its own, should tell you a lot about what Mourinho's now expecting from his players playing in the fullback or wing-back positions and how different his expectations of the players playing those roles within his system currently are to what we're perhaps used to seeing. So like we said, Mata was sold from Chelsea because he didn't track back, didn't do enough legwork. 
Now, a lot of people still argue to this very day that it was a wrong decision. Mourinho probably looks back at it and says, I won the Premier League. So people can say it's a wrong decision, but whatever decisions he took that season obviously worked, right? Um, and a lot of people were saying when he came into Man United, is he going to keep Mata? Some people kind of thought it was a personal thing, but I think Mata's definitely been one of Man United's better players this season. And one of the reasons why Mourinho is using Juan Mata is because he has changed his approach. He's modified his approach to suit the players he has at hand. He's adapted their overall playing style to be less defensively minded at the expense of actually getting wing backs involved a lot more and getting your attacking players involved a lot more, like giving your attacking midfielder less leg work to do defensively as a sacrifice to try and score more goals and play to the strengths of the players that he currently has. So when you watch Man United, you do get glimpses of Mourinho in terms of, for example, his teams won't really bother playing out the back unless they're trying to hold on to a lead, for example. But let's say it's nil-nil and they need a goal. De Gea won't play a short pass out the back. So I don't know, the centre-back, like you might see Spurs do, or like you might see... Man City do. You know, one of the main reasons why Guardiola apparently got rid of Joe Hart was because he wanted a goalkeeper that was good with his feet, because he believes in holding onto the ball and playing out the back. With De Gea, he plays more 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 as a sweeper keeper. You'll some sometimes see him run straight out of his box and just hoof the ball back forwards to try and get that ball into the final third towards a target man in Zlatan who can win that ball, hold it up in the final third, and allow more Man United men to surge into the final third. And in the scenario where centre-backs are forced to try and pass out the back, that's where a player like Herrera or Mata comes in and they'll look to pass it off to the nearest player they can find and then one of them playmakers can play a direct ball forwards. In a way, kind of reminiscent of how Paul Scholes used to sometimes play under Alex Ferguson and even the way we used to see Michael Carrick play under Alex Ferguson, pick the ball up nice and simple off the centre-backs and play a diagonal ball forwards, big direct diagonal ball forwards into the final third so that the attacking players can do something with it. I sometimes feel like in 2017 there's a bit of an obsession with playing short passing football and sometimes people forget that direct football nowadays is still just as, just as effective. Um, and I feel like sometimes people look at direct football like it's a bad thing, yet the truth is, it isn't. Out on the left hand side, we mainly see Anthony Martial, he sometimes almost becomes like a second striker, he's very Ronaldo-esque from Real Madrid where right footed player, even though Ronaldo can really use both feet and I think Martial really can use both feet but really their main feet are their right feet and use their pace out on the left, cut inside, cause defenders all sorts of problems and get a shot on goal and one of the main reasons why having an inside forward-esque player out on the left hand side is because that role fits quite a few players in the Man United side and it makes sense because this Man United side has a lot of attacking technical ability that he's inherited from Louis van Gaal and a lot of pace as well. So you think of players that could suit that role in case Ibra's injured, for example. Martial has to play up front on his own. Rashford could play out on the wing. Lingard can play out of the wing. Even Mkhitaryan can fill in that role. Then on the opposite wing, you have more of your Angel Di Maria like we had at Real Madrid. But... Where it differs is that Di Maria used to be really an out-and-out -out winger that would just bomb forwards and almost do the role that Antonio Valencia has been doing this season for Man United. Instead, Mourinho's realised, right, we're playing more attacking, which means I want less legwork from Juan Mata in the attacking midfielder position defensively, and I want him to push forward because if, if um, Zlatan can play the ball, win the ball in the air from a cross... Or something along them lines, play it to Mata. If you want one player in the Man United side who's going to unlock a defence with a pass so in the final third, it's always going to be Juan Mata, that, which means Juan Mata pushes forward, almost kind of becomes a second striker, playing off the big man in Zlatan, and Mkhitaryan will then cut inside, like the wide playmaker role on football manager, to ensure Man United always have a triangle of three in the midfield. And because Mkhitaryan's a very, very versatile player as well, rather than being an out-and-out -out winger, so he'll cut inside as a wide playmaker. And then to fill the void 
on the other wing, that's where Valencia comes in. And immediately you have this more attacking approach where Mata's getting involved a lot more. You've got the player cutting in from the left and you suddenly have a fullback that's almost basically become a winger. And then from that point onwards, McTarian, even if he's central, can still push forward. Pogba will certainly push forward. And then you'll have your Herreras and your centre-backs maybe hanging back a little bit with the inclusion of your opposite side fullback who might play a little bit more defensive to ensure you still have a solid base of players behind the ball so that you don't get counter-attacked. So it's really small intricate changes from what we're used to seeing from Mourinho which are nice small more attacking changes simply to suit the players that he's got at his expense. And you might be thinking well this isn't how Man United played when they beat Chelsea 2-0. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, Mourinho is one of the managers that is incredibly adaptive and the fact that he has such intelligent players on the pitch and world-class players at the teams that he manages, it makes his life easier when he wants to change things from a tactical standpoint. So really against Chelsea, Man United played more of a 2-2, 4-2 if that's what you want to call it, which is quite different to this 4-2-3-1. And it's very difficult, and one of the main reasons why I didn't really want to do Mourinho's Man United is because unlike perhaps his Real Madrid side, where La Liga was pretty easy to dominate, in the Premier League, Mourinho always has to chop and change and try and exploit opposition weaknesses. And sometimes that might cause a player to have to man-mark a player, which will draw him out of position, like Herrera and Hazard, for example, against Chelsea. And if you want to manage like Mourinho, you are going to have to be an adaptive manager like him. And it is really difficult for you to just load a tactic, let it play out for an entire season, and genuinely try to mimic Mourinho. Now, in terms of football managers as a game, you can get away with that but it isn't what Mourinho's like in real life at all. So these wide roles in particular will more than often change throughout a game or between games, depending on not only the players that Mourinho has at his expense, but also on opposition players and weaknesses. So defensively off the ball, even though we've been saying that at Man United, Mourinho's probably trying to have more of a looser attacking approach, you know, less man-marking approach, more zonal marking approach. He still obviously puts emphasis on keeping his shape behind the ball. It's something that's really in ingrained in Mourinho. Off the ball, both wingers, whether it's the right winger or the left winger, will have to track back and protect their fullbacks. You might not necessarily expect the same from the advanced playmaker, which is Mata, which isn't what Mourinho wanted at Chelsea, but is something Mata can now get away with. Uh, even Ibrahimovic and Mata, at times, though, do still come deeper, particularly Ibra, who, for his age, does a lot of legwork coming deep, you know, and helping Man United out defensively. They both really try to do as much closing down behind the ball as they can, but there isn't that same level of intensity required as we perhaps saw from Costa and Willian a few seasons ago at Chelsea. When you think about it from a from a commonsensical point of view, it makes sense, right, when you're playing a counter-attacking formation to try and have as many players behind the ball as possible and try to close the ball down and contribute because if you can win the ball back, then you basically trigger a counter-attack, which is how you're going to go about trying to score most of your goals. This is kind of like dating back to what we discussed in the Klopp Gigan pressing video. If you've not seen it, there'll be a link to it in the description below. So now let's take a look at how we've managed to recreate this in Football Manager. So as you can see, I played up to Boxing Day and we're at top of the league. And the funny thing is that we've actually drawn no games. And obviously in real life, one of Mourinho's main problems has been drawing games. Now, you know, some people might look at this and be like, well, that's obviously not Mourinho's Man United then. And to be fair, one of the main reasons why I didn't want to do Mourinho's Man United was because I don't think they've exactly been phenomenal this season. And it just didn't seem right. You know, we've done Klopp because Liverpool started the season really well. We've done Conte because Chelsea are about to win the league. We've done Spurs because Pochettino's transformation at Spurs has been phenomenal. But 
I decided to stay loyal to all the viewers that asked for Mourinho's system at Man United. And now, looking back at things, I'm really happy that I have tried to mimic it. Because even though in real life it's not exactly gone according to plan for Jose, it's it works wonders in FM 2017. 17 games won, 2 games lost halfway through the season. Some people will look at it and be like, well, of course it's going to work wonders you're playing as Man United, it's not hard to find a tactic that works under Man United. But I'll tell you why I am really fond of it. And in fact, I'll show you. Right. Let's take a quick look at the results before we go back. So, all these results were played in the latest match engine. 17.3.1, disclaimer. SI could come out with an update and, I don't know, make this stop working for some reason. If they change something to do with the match engine, but it applies to... All of my recreation tactics, really. But we'll look at some of these results. 6-1 win over Man City in the Manchester derby after going 1-0 down in the fourth minute. And a 5-0 win over Liverpool. Now, obviously, you still see 1-0 wins against Bournemouth on the left-hand side. And maybe not as impressive 3-1 wins against West Brom and 2-0 wins against Sunderland. But even though we got a loss against Arsenal and a loss against West Ham... I don't really consider them as real losses because it doesn't matter what tactic you you use. Most of the time, if you've not achieved full tactical familiarity, you are always going to get outliers. But that to one side, I think the results and the lovely counter-attacking football that the tactic has actually reproduced is very reminiscent of Mourinho at Real Madrid with a few tweaks. So if you are a Man United fan, if you do play Man United on Football Manager, I do strongly recommend you, you take a look at this. And talking about taking a look at it, let's go back and genuinely take a look at the tactical approach. Formation-wise, you're probably looking at this and thinking, God, blimey, is this really a 4-2-3-1? I personally argue it is. So we've got the sweeper-keeper on attack, that is, of course, David De Gea. He'll be getting quite involved and be rushing off his line quite a lot, like we see in real life. Both wing-backs getting involved quite a lot so we see McTarion out on the right hand side he's a wide playmaker on attack he'll cut inside when Juan Mata who's the advanced playmaker in the middle of the park pushes up to help Ibrahimovic uh, which means that Valencia can exploit that space left on the right wing and give opposition defenses quite a lot to worry about and as well because we have an inside forward on the left hand side when Martial, for example, or Lingard or Rashford cut inside, that creates a lot of room for your Luke Shaw or your Ashley Young to overlap on the left-hand side as well. You know, and you look at this and think, wow, if the DLP pushes forward and your Pogba, your box-to-box -box pushes forward as well, you've only really got two centre-backs and a sweeper-keeper defensively. Isn't that a risk? Well, yes, it is a risk. But when you're Manchester United, when you've got the players that Manchester United do is different to when you're playing as an Everton or a Crystal Palace or a Sunderland, for example, and you can afford to give your players that extra attacking leeway, and Mourinho realises that. So back four is pretty self-explanatory. The wide playmaker role is maybe a Mkhitaryan. He'll cut inside and create a third person in midfield when Juan Mata kind of pushes up to help Ibrahimovic in this central area. Sometimes he'll push because he's on attack all the way up here. Ibra's your complete forward, testing and trying out this tactic. In my first save, I went with a target man, but I found that it resulted in far too many direct balls being lumped forward. Now we've got quite a nice, decent mix that really more accurately represents Mourinho's Man United, and Ibra will be an absolute goal machine playing up front. If you end up, for example, with Ibra getting injured and playing Rashford, you'd probably want to change Rashford to more of a deep line forward or maybe an advanced forward. But again, this is all part of you managing your team. I create, this is the same applies with my Conte recreation and Klopp and Pochettino. I give you guys the base that is proven successful. But in Football Manager, it's no longer FM12 where you can plug and play a tactic. Even if you have a solid base, you still need to be a adaptive manager. You might sometimes, from time to time, have to change the odd role, the odd instruction around to exploit an opponent or to get the best out of an individual player. So your deep line playmaker would be your Herrera or your Carrick, for example. He can easily switch with your advanced playmaker, and that works pretty well. When your advanced playmaker might get tired, you can switch them around, for example, have Juan Mata playing the long, direct, diagonal balls forward. Even though that player is on defend, he will still push forward into midfield. And you can feel free to change that to support as well if you want. It will probably result in even more goals, but 
I wanted to kind of find a more accurate balance. AP is your Juan Mata, your DLP really is your Herrera, and your box-to-box -box is your Pogba. Now one of the instructions, as we'll see in a bit, on the box-to-box -box is to shoot more. Pogba helps out offensively, helps out defensively. When your Mata pushes forward, they become your two kind of holding players in midfield. Or when your box-to-box -box pushes forward, it easily becomes a V-shape in midfield when your wide playmaker also pushes forward wide. So you can see, even though this is at a, a heart a 4-2-3-1, it's a very versatile formation that can change based off of players' movement. And that is what makes it so good offensively that it becomes very, very difficult for opposition defenders to be able to track. So your wide playmaker on the right-hand side, yeah, he's a wide playmaker, yeah, he's playing down the right wing. Sometimes he will bomb down the right wing and play a ball into the box but sometimes he'll, he'll also come central, which makes him very, very hard to man-mark and pick up by opposition players. The same applies to the inside forward. As well, Ibra, we've opted to put him on support because Ibra does come deep quite a lot, You know, uses his strength, closes down the opposition from the front, helps out the midfield, and he's an absolute beast in that role, as we'll see. Last but not least, Pogba. He's got a shoot more often uh, instruction and Pogba in Football Manager has 18 long shots. So if you like scoring long shots, just put Pogba in that role and he'll basically score long shots for fun. <laughs> so going forwards, team instructions, attacking. Again, you think of Mourinho, you think more of a counter mentality perhaps, but you are Man United. Um, we're playing slightly more looser under Mourinho. Apologies that it says Conte system at the top. Uh, tempo, higher. Uh, Counter-attacking, when you're on the ball and when you've got players as good as Man United players with the pace that they do, it's a shame not to play with a high tempo and it is how Mourinho's teams really have always tried to play. Width-wise, you don't want to be too wide. That makes you far too exposed at the back. And you don't want to be too narrow as well because you do still want your wing-backs to get involved. So a fairly narrow width it's pretty good and it allows you to play through the middle like Man United really do. Most of the strength of creativity comes through the middle. It comes through your Pogba's, your Herrera's and your Matters. Defensive line wise, you don't want anything too special here. Like we said, the back four are already a little bit more exposed than maybe I would like or Mourinho would like. Um, but because you've got such good centre backs and midfielders, more than often you'll be alright as Man United, but that could be something you might want to tweak against a bigger side, even though it worked pretty well against Man City for us. Closing down, Mourinho's Chelsea, for example, weren't really known for intense closing down. A lot of the time, particularly in their own half, uh, both Chelsea sides actually would kind of keep their shape, stand off opponents, because even though when you close down opposition players, um, in a way... You're closing them down, but at the same time, you're also exposing space in behind the player that's closing down, which creates a gap for an opposition player to run into or for a pass to be played into. So closing down on sometimes works pretty well because you've got strong players. So most of the time, they'll have a pretty good judgment in terms of whether or not they feel like they can close down a player and win the ball back. If they can't, then they'll just jockey a player and basically ensure that, that player can't play a pass through them nor really get past them. Passing into space is a no-brainer when you're playing with a high tempo and you've got fast players when you're looking to play on the counter-attack. We're not looking to retain possession because there's no point really. Because you're Man United, you'll find a lot of the time that you have most of the possession anyways. Uh, passing directness, it's fine to go with a mixed passing directness simply because you've got the quality players, you've got the high quality players and at the end of the day, you don't have to worry really about a misplace in too many passes because you are Man United and that nice mix of both short passing and direct passing means you won't be too wasteful with too much direct passing and hoofing it forward. You know, you won't be playing like Allardyce, but at the same time you won't be playing like Guardiola. You'll let the player for himself make the judgment and with a higher tempo when you mix them two together, if the player feels like a direct ball is suitable to try and launch a counter attack, he'll do exactly just that. And as for the final third and you know, the attack bit of the team instructions, that's been left completely empty. Because there's no point given that you are Man United. You've got so many magical players in the final third, so many magical centre midfielders that'll push into the final third that 
you just leave it up to them and they'll get the job done for you. In terms of player instructions, De Gea, more direct passes, take long kicks, distribute to target man. Now, I'm not playing with a target man, but based off of what I saw, a complete forward also counts as a less prominent target man. So it seemed to me like the match engine knew who I was talking about. It could have been complete luck. I don't like what they've done in terms of instructions and target men and stuff. I miss the old used tick target man checkbox that we used to have. But uh, most of De Gea's goal kicks or sweeper kicks when he'd uh, come off his line and pick up counter-attacking balls would go straight to Ibra where uh, he'd do incredibly well to win the ball in the air. And talking about being an adaptive manager, let's say you're not playing Ibra up front, yeah, you're playing Rashford you might want to go into De Gea's player settings and then change that and tell him maybe to distribute to a wide man, for example, or maybe to even start passing out the back. And that's what you're going to have to do if you really do want to you know, manage the best as you can. I've just realised it says Conte again. <laughs> and so your wing-backs will both look to tackle harder and mark tighter. Uh, a lot of the time they will come central. Um, because they've got closed down much more on and try to win the ball back. Now this is risky because if a wing back goes inside and tries to, to close down a central player, you need a fluid team shape to ensure that your wide man ends up covering the space that's left by your uh, your wing back and that's one of the reasons why we've gone with a fluid approach tactically. It's a risk, yes, because the wing back, if the winger doesn't cover the wing back, it leaves a lot of space to be exploited up against a slower centre back. But if you end up winning the ball back in midfield, then it it can launch some pretty awesome counter-attacking situations. And that's really just a small example of the difference between how Mourinho's given his players a little bit more leeway, a little bit more a little bit more encouragement to take risks, to take more risks and uh, promote trying to score goals rather than be less risky and aim for the clean sheet as we've seen him do in the past. Centre-backs are told to pass it shorter, that way most of their passes will go to the deep-line playmaker who will come deep to pick it up. Um, he'll play more direct passes because that's his role really, uh, to play long direct diagonal balls forward to the front three or to Ebra to cause problems for opposition defences. The advanced playmaker closed down much more, Mark tighter, get further forward, get further forward. We talked about that earlier on, he sometimes almost becomes like a second striker. And he is someone you want in the final third as well because of Mata's passing ability. But at the same time, the close down much more means he tries as much as possible to contribute defensively. But it's not the end of the world if he doesn't. Your boxer box will shoot more often. Pogba will score long shots for days with 18 long shots. It's quite fun to watch. Uh, defensively, quite self-explanatory. He looks to get further forward as well. And that's where it sometimes ends up looking like a 4-3-3 V-shape in midfield. Because Herrera will kind of stay deeper than both Matter and Pogba that push forward so then it becomes more of a 4-3-3 as opposed to a 4-2-3-1. He also looks to move into the channels and has more of a free roam and you kind of want Pogba to do that because even though he's a box-to-box -box role wise Pogba's so good on this game that really you want him to find as much space as possible because when he does get the ball he'll be absolutely phenomenal with it and if it's not an assist, it's a bloody long shot from outside the box that he'll score from. Your wide playmaker, he'll mark tighter, get further forward and close down much more. Again, his wide playmaker, he'll cut inside sometimes, he'll sometimes turn into a winger. When you've got a player like McTerrian, just let him do whatever the hell he wants to do and he'll do all right. And the mark tighter and close down much more instructions, just make him that little bit more useful defensively than just leave him out on the wing doing nothing really. Your inside forward, same instructions roughly, bar the roam from position. Uh, and again, you've got a player like Martial or even if you put Lingard there or Rashford there, you want to give him that little bit of flexibility and freedom to come inside, find pockets of space or maybe even stay wide and find a pocket of space because you want to use that player, right? Um, they almost become a second striker as well. And you can imagine at times when that player cuts inside, Matters pushed forward, you've got your wing backs pushing forward, McTurian that's cut inside and Pogba ready to strike it off the edge of the box. It becomes very, very overwhelming for opposition sides. And last but not least, you complete forward, tackle harder, move into channels. That's all you really want from Ibra up front. And moving to channels is quite an important instruction as well because it is kind of what Ibrahimovic does in real life. He will come deep 
move into channels, try and pick up the ball, but at the same time move into, into channels offensively. And that's why we've also got pass into space on because he'll move into a channel and then a matter will thread a ball through to him where he'll somehow find himself one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper and be able to finish it off rather than just keep Ibrahimovic very, very static. He is old, but he's not Peter Crouch. He's Zlatan Ibrahimovic, and you want to give him that extra bit of freedom and encourage him to make runs in the channels. Opposition instructions, Mourinho's pleased none. The only instructions you really have to do, make sure your AMR is man-marking any opposition AMLs or MLs. It's just basically man marking the opposition winger that way you make sure that they do track back and help out the defense it's the same thing we do in our Klopp approach and Pochettino approach I'll link in the description a video where I explain how you can do man marking yourself and the same applies to your opposite guy on the flank so your AML should be also man marking the opposition MR and AMR and uh, yeah it's pretty simple to do and just make sure that they man mark your opponent player and that they contribute a little bit more defensively because this year on the football manager match engine unless you tell your wide players to do some form of man marking most of the time they'll just stay in the opposition final third and won't help out defensively which for an approach like this is pretty catastrophic results wise we've already taken a look at these results as we can see on both games on the right hand side Ibra is just a god it's that simple hat-trick within the first half against Liverpool and the only reason he probably didn't even score in the second half is because I took him off to give Rashford a run around I tore the Man City defence open Martial will get on the score sheet as well and uh, believe it or not that Paul Pogba goal in the 85th minute yeah what a shot from outside the box and that's what you'll get with this tactic it will take a few games for you to get 100% tactical familiarity what you are guaranteed is loads and loads of goals which it's nice. It's quite nice to watch when you do have players that are capable of playing that way in Football Manager. So individually, bear in mind that we're kind of not even in 2017 where this screenshot was taken. Zlatan, 25 appearances, um, 3 off the bench, 21 goals and 7 assists. Now that's a phenomenal ratio for someone his age and really it just goes to show how much of an important player he is for this side but also how well he fits into the tactic Martial, sure he's playing out on the left but he's got a rating of 8.68 brilliant only scored two less goals than Ibra as well 19 goals halfway through the season 12 goals for Paul Pogba a lot of them amazing strikes from outside the box six assists as well which you'd really expect nothing less from a player like Paul Pogba Mata four goals, seven assists, even Rashford's, you know, gotten some goals for himself and McTarian with eight assists, which is what you want from a player like him. Conclusion, we were successful, as we always conveniently seem to be. Don't expect to plug and play. You have to micromanage. And if you really want to emulate Mourinho, you've kind of got to get out of that mindset that, like, there's one way to play football and all these different managers in the world play football one way. And as soon as the game kicks off, all they do is substitutions and rely on no other changes. It's not how, how football management works. And I do think as football manager becomes more and more complex as a game, um, as a manager, you'll be required to do even more of that. As with every tactic, you need the right players. This was designed around Man United. So don't come to me with trying to play as, I don't know, FC United of Manchester and moan that it ain't working and that you're... 41 year old striker with a beer belly ain't scoring 21 goals a season man marking we've already discussed if your opposition are playing with a five at the back formation where they have just wing backs as their wide men don't bother with any man marking so make sure you're going to the player settings and set their man marking to none otherwise they'll end up man marking central midfielders which will just be really weird um, training wise make sure you do tactical familiarity first in pre-season once your tactical familiarity hits 100%, then just focus on defensive positioning, uh, which is probably a good idea given how attacking this approach is in areas. But on that note, I know this is a video that a lot of people have been looking forward to. Hopefully you enjoyed it. There'll be a link, in fact, two links in the description to download the tactic and try it out yourself. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. Hopefully you've learned something new today. I've certainly learned new stuff in the process of making this tactic. And as always, let me know in the comments which tactics you want me to recreate from now until the end of FM 
2017. I've been looking at Zidane's Real Madrid, I've been looking at a few Ancelotti ones, but I've not really decided on one 100% yet. There's been some shouts for a Sir Alex Ferguson 442 and some Tony Pulis 442s. Just let me know what you want in the comments, guys. Whichever one seems the most popular, I'll try and start work on it. It does take a lot of time to really recreate these, study how the teams play, get them as accurate as possible, but most importantly, it's all good making a tactic that seems accurate but you also want it to return results so that you know you guys can come along and play with a tactic and get results that's the end goal really as well as trying to recreate a tactic Mourinho's Real Madrid is also another one that I've had in mind even though it's not really too different from this it'll mainly be player instructions where it will differ I could even do a really quick short video where I've just modified this tactic a little bit and turned it into more of his Real Madrid approach with Chabi Alonso and Kadira mainly used in midfield. So like I said, it will just mainly be like some small tweaks and it will be a quick video. So if you think that could be interesting, where we'll discuss what exactly has been tweaked and why, let me know. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. I certainly did. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can feel free to follow me on Twitch and Twitter as well. But until next time, I've been Kai and I... The uh, lovely smiley man on the screen has been the special one. See you next time.